Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp for iPad Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp for iPad. Today, we're going to talk about the solid tools. So solid tools is not actually a tool. It is a series of tools. It's six different tools that you can use. Um, and these tools all function similarly in that they take solid groups or components and have them interact. They can merge together or cut one from another. A lot of times it's referred to as Boolean operations. Boolean, which is kind of a fun thing to say, Boolean. I'm not sure why they went with solid tools. I guess solid tools probably translates better something. But uh, yes, yeah, so we're gonna take a look at each of those six tools right now. So like I mentioned, we do have to work, this is uh, solid tools, as the name implies, works with solids. So real quick, a solid is a group or component that is one solid outline, one solid shell, one solid piece. If you select it in Entity Info, it will tell you it is a solid group or components. None of these commands will work on raw geometry, even if they're closed up, you know, all closed up. If they're not in a container, SketchUp will not recognize them as solid. So they have to be in a group or a component for this to work. Um, the other thing, of course, I can't have raw geometry floating around inside here. If I had a bunch of extra lines, edges, or holes in this mesh, it wouldn't work as solid. So it does have to have a solid group. So the, the tools themselves are in the overflow menu. They're right up here. Outer shell, intersect, union, subtract, trim, and split. We're going to run through all six of these real quick. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to show kind of what I've got here. I've got some geometry. So I actually have two sets of the same geometry here. I have a little extruded rectangle for a floor, uh, another extruded rectangle with a hole in it for the walls, and then kind of an extruded triangle shape for the roof. Simple. But I have that same thing two times. So I'm just going to, I just moved these apart to show you what was going on, but I'm going to go ahead and undo to put them back together. Now, I want to take all of these and just make one solid chunk out of them. So what I can do is I can select these. Um, I'll select all three of them, and they're all solid groups. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to click Outer Shell. And you see what happens. Boom, I have one piece. The lines here at the edge disappeared. Um, if I click on it, it tells me it is a solid. So that solid shell just made one outside piece solid shell when it does that it creates a hole or a, this is just one big solid outside piece that hole that was in the middle the space for the inside the walls is gone at this point separate from that if i come in here and i pick these three so again three solid groups selected and we'll do union instead they look very very similar right they look i mean they look exactly the same uh, if I pick this solid group, solid group. So they both show up as solid groups. They both look the same, but here's the difference between this outer shell and this union right here. If I create a section, I'm just going to put a section right here and then I'm going to move it. Look at that. See that hole there, that void in the middle there. That is the difference between outer shell and union. Union's going to take the solids, put them together, but honor any space in there. Outer shell is going to look at the outside most face and only use that. Anything in the inside gets wiped out and gone. All right, so that's two solid tools. Let's look at two more. So right here, again, I have, it's actually a copy of those same set of walls, and I have some uh, cubes here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cube right here, and I'm going to move it so it runs right through the wall of this other solid. Everything here is a solid. And what I'm going to do is with the, the cube selected, I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to click Subtract. And then I'm going to click on the walls. When I do that, you can see it removes that geometry of the first selected item from the second selected item. It also threw out that second item. Sometimes that's fine. Sometimes that's good. You want to take the shape of one way from another. Sometimes you want to use it repetitively. So say I want two walls and two windows in the side of this wall here. What I could do, I'll grab move. Whoops. I don't want to spin it. I just want to move it. There we go. All right, so that's running through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this piece. Select that, and I'm going to use Trim instead. So Trim is highlighted, 
and now I pick this, it cuts it. But now I can say move, move this one over, and then guess what? I can come in here and say trim a second time. Now at this point, I'll, okay, now I'll get rid of it. But that way I can use the same cutter again and again. So if you do have like, want the same hole showing up multiple times or some interaction where you want to use it again and again, trim will let you cut the hole without throwing away that first piece. All right, so we've done four. That's four solid tools. Let's do two more because that's how many there are. There are two left. All right, so here I have, you're not gonna believe this, same house geometry. So just a single solid though. At this point, everything has been brought together, one solid group. Um, and what I'm gonna do this time is start by selecting this house. I'm gonna come in here and we have two items here that I wanna look at. One is split and one is intersect. So the, the kind of the, what I'm mocking up here is the idea of cut and fill. So if this house was to drop into this landscape, something would have to get cut out of that space, right? So how much dirt is that? How much, how much geometry, how much material has to be removed so that this house could sit into this hillside that way? So if I select that and then I come in here and I say intersect and then click this solid, what's left, this is the chunk that would have to be removed. So this is great because I can do things like, uh, you know, I measure this material. Uh, it'll tell me the volume because it is a solid. It'll tell you exactly how big it is, 77 cubic feet. This is not huge, but uh, you know, that would give me just the cut. It would take just the cut piece out and make it its own group. The other command I want to look at, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select my house. I'm going to come into the overflow menu. And this time though, I'm going to hit split split and then I'll click this. Now what that's going to do, I'll grab, you know, let's select this and I'm going to just move it straight up. There we go. Where's up? There we go. And then I'm going to grab this piece and I'm going to move it also straight up. So this is what this does. So maybe not perfect for the house right here. Probably if I was creating a model, I would want to keep my house as a full piece, but this doesn't throw away everything when it calculates that, that middle piece, it holds on to it. So what I could do in this case is probably maybe make a copy of that original house, bring that over, but then I have this cut piece. So I know what's cut out. And then I also have the original hillside with the hole that the house is supposed to go into. So just another way to use solids to create new geometry. And in this case, like figure out exactly how these pieces will go together in the real world. So there you go. That is six solid tools on SketchUp for iPad. Uh, I hope that was helpful for you. I hope that makes sense. Uh, solid tools are great tools to work with. You can create some really cool geometry with overlapping shapes. The big thing, of course, is you do have to work with solids. You have to keep everything in a group, in a component, just the outside faces, manifold shape is what that's called when everything is an outside face and every face connects by its edge to another face. That is a requirement. Once you have that though, you can use any of those solid tools on any solids and make whatever geometry you want. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos a week around here and you'd be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please do leave us a comment down below. Do you use solid tools? Do you work in solids? Let us know what you think about it. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.